تحياتي للجميع في هذا الفيديو الخاص بمناقشة أسئلة Multiple Choice Questions بخصوص Chapter of Pharmacotherapy of Diabetes Militus حنشوف إن شاء الله جملة من Questions عبارة عن Case Studies and Direct Questions مهم كتير أن نحن نركز إن شاء الله في Options ونحاول نختار Correct and the best answer. Then choose the correct and best answer, and let us see the first question. Question one: What should the nurse include when teaching client about insulin? Select all that apply. هون حيكون عندي أكثر من option صحيح و. في حالة التيتشينج للكلاينت أنو جمل أو عبارات حتكون ترو في هذا الحالة Option 1 Rotate injection sites Option 2 Store insulin in the freezer Option 3 Carry a readily available supply of sugar And Option 4 Recognize the signs of hypoglycemia لو درجعنا مع بعض الانسولين ونشوف مع بعض الاجابات الصحيحه بنجد انه الاجابه الاولى ستريت انجكشن سايتس صحيح الاجابه الثانيه ستور انسولين ان ذا فريزر احنا بنعرف انه الانسولين ممكن يتخزن نعمل له ستورج ات ريفريجريتور في اربع درجات مئويه او ات روم تمبريتشر اذا اوبشن 2 خطا Carry a readily available supply of sugar. أكيد يعني لازم يتناول sugar بعد ما يأخذ الجرعة ويدراقب أو يتعرف على signs of hypoglycemia. إذا الإجابات الصحيحة حتكون ال answer option number one, three, and four. وللتوضيح injection sites should be rotated to prevent lipodystrophy. And diabetes should carry a readily available source of sugar, and finally, clients should understand the symptoms of hypoglycemia. While options two are incorrect, because insulin should be stored at room temperature or refrigerator at full grade, not in the freezer. Question number two: The home health nurse observes clients three months supply of insulin vials are not refrigerated. In this case, the health nurse observed that the clients received vials of insulin that they didn't store in the freezer for three months. Which action should the nurse take? What action should the nurse take in this case? The first option instructs the client that unopened bottles can be stored for up to three months. Second option instructs the client to label each vial with the date when opened. And third option instructs the client that the insulin should be stored away from direct sunlight or excessive heat. And the final option, option number four, have the client discard the vials. لو لاحظنا بنجد انه the correct answer is number three. للتوضيح unopened vials can be stored at room temperature but should be stored away from direct sunlight or direct heat. بينما ال options one, two and four are incorrect. للتوضيح unopened vials of insulin can be stored at room temperature for up to three days for only one month. Writing the date of opening on the vial is good practice, but does not address the need of to refrigerate additional vials. And finally, there is no need to discard the vials. Two questions. Question number three, third question, which describes the mechanism of action of regular insulin. Two mechanism of action. Let me see. First option stimulate the pancreas to produce insulin. Second option promote entry of glucose into the cells. Third option stimulate the pancreas to excrete more insulin. And fourth option facilitate the entry of glucose into the bloodstream. 
لازم تكون correct و best answer في هذه الحالة وهي الـ answer number two the action of regular insulin is to promote entry of glucose into the cell لهذا therapy lowering glucose options number one, three, four are incorrect oral hypoglycemic drugs such as glipizide stimulate the pancreas to produce insulin and insulin facilitate the entry of glucose into the cell. Fourth question, a patient with type 1 diabetes will use a combination insulin that includes NPH and regular insulin. Danias is explaining the importance of knowing two big times for both insulin. Why is this important information for the patient to know? The first option, the patient will be able to estimate the time for the next injection of insulin based on these peaks. Second option, the risk of hypoglycemic reaction is greatest around the peak of insulin activity. Third option, it's best to plan activities or exercise around peak insulin times for the best utilization of glucose. And finally, the last option, Additional insulin may be required at the peak periods to prevent hyperglycemia. When we discussed the fourth options, we found or find that true or correct option is number two. Then, then the answer is number two. Insulin peaks are the times of maximum insulin utilization with the greatest risk of hyperglycemia. While options 1, 3, and 4 are incorrect because the risk for hyperglycemia is highest at big serum insulin level exercise or additional insulin may increase the risk further. Insulin should use for the patient are developed by the provider and the patients should not self-select a schedule for insulin use. Question number 5. Before administering a morning Lispro, insulin human look injection it's a rapid insulin which activity should the nurse perform select or that apply here uh, there are uh, more than one answer the first option obtain a morning urine sample for glucose and ketones second option check the patient's finger stick glucose level Third option, ensure that breakfast trays are present on the unit and the patient may eat. Fourth option, obtain the patient's pulse and blood pressure. And the fifth option, assess for symptoms of hypoglycemia. The correct answer of this question is 4R, 2, 3, and 5. The blood glucose level should be checked prior to administering any type of insulin. Because Lispro is rapid acting insulin, the nurse should ensure that a meal is available and that the patient will be able to eat shortly after receiving a dose. If signs of hypoglycemia are present, the insulin dose should be held and the patient treated for hypoglycemia. A, a find the provider should be notified. While options two and four are incorrect, because your testing for glucose and ketones does not give exact information, and patients vary on degree to which glucose and ketones will spill into the urine. While a check of a pulse or blood pressure may be included in the routine vital signs or further assess symptoms of hypoglycemia, they don't provide information directly pertinent to the administration of insulin. Question number six. The NIAS would consider which of the following assessment findings as best effects to metformin therapy. Hypoglycemia or gastrointestinal distress or lactic acidosis or weight loss. The correct answer is three options. A serious adverse effect of metformin is the risk of developing lactic acidosis, renal insufficiency and failure. This alcohol use and IV contrast agents increased the risk of lactic acidosis and are contraindications to the use of 
metformin. While options 1, 2, and 4 are incorrect, hypoglycemia, GI distress, and weight loss are common adverse effects to most oral anti-diabetic drugs are not specific to metformin. Question number seven. A patient was started, started on resuglitazone for type 2 diabetes. He tells the nurse that he has been taking it for five days, but his glucose levels are unchanged. What is the nurse's best response? First option, you should double the dose. That should help. Second option, you need to give the drug more time. It can take several weeks before it becomes fully effective. Third option, you will need to add a second drug since this one has not been effective. And third option, you must likely require insulin now. The best and correct answer to this question is number two. It can take several weeks for this glitazone to provide full therapeutic effects. So the appropriate response would be to give it more time to reach effectiveness. While option two, three, four are incorrect, it's not within a near scope of practice to prescribe additional drugs or change the dose. The healthcare provider should be consulted about any change to the patient's drug regimen. Question number eight. A young woman calls the clinic and reports that her mother had an insulin reaction and was found unconscious. The young woman gave her a glucagon injection 20 minutes ago and her mother woke up but still groggy and does not make sense. What should the nurse tell the daughter? First option, let her wake up on her own, then give her something to eat, or place some hard candies in her mouth. Third option, just let her sleep. People are sleepy after hypoglycemic episodes. And finally, give her another injection and call the paramedics. The best answer and correct answer to this question is four. Because glucagon injections can be repeated if one does not effective, hypoglycemia is a medical emergency. And because his woman has, this woman has not fully recovered, medical attention is needed. While options two, one, two, three are incorrect. The patient is still experiencing symptoms of hypoglycemia. Continued treatment is indicated because she is still groggy and disoriented it should not be safe to give his patient anything by mouth. Final question. The nurse explains the benefit of using long-acting insulin glargine lantos over other insulins. What will the nurse tell the patient about this insulin? Option number one, it does not need to be administered by injection. Second option, it can be given by intramuscular or subcutaneous injection. Third option, it does not require blood glucose monitoring. And final option, it has no definite peak but maintains steady state of insulin in the body. The correct answer is four. Insulin glargine has no definite peak. So there is a minimal risk of hypoglycemic reaction. While options 1, 2, 3 are incorrect, insulin glargine must be given by subcutaneous injection, it can be given by IM injection, and blood glucose monitoring is required for all patients taking any insulin. Finally, in this video, I would to thank you for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe for this channel. Uh, مع تحياتي للجميع uh,